opportunities here to talk about uh, near dent manufacturing using lathe weld deposition. Thanks very much for the intro. Uh, so, near dent manufacturing using lathe weld deposition it might sound like a bit of a mystery at first, but the concept behind my thesis is actually quite simple. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the very common plastic 3D printers which you can see all over the place these days. The idea behind my thesis is to implement a similar manufacturing approach but using a robotic arc welding system instead. But before I get too much into that, um, I'll first talk about exactly what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so first I'm going to introduce what, exactly what additive and near ma manufacturing means and then uh, present a robotic near manufacturing system. I'll then talk about the specific aims of my thesis and present the software I developed to meet those aims. I'll also talk about the weld parameter optimization I performed and then show you some of the example pieces I manufactured. And then I'll conclude and talk about future directions for this work. So, what is additive manufacturing and why would you want to use it? Additive manufacturing refers to a whole family of manufacturing techniques or processes where you build it, where you, you are incrementally deposit material to build up a part until you've achieved the final shape. So this is in contrast to more conventional subtractive manufacturing techniques where you start with a solid block of material and then cut away pieces until you have the final shape. And there are several processes which implement additive manufacturing. Uh, perhaps the most uh, common is fused deposition modeling, which is shown here, uh, which is used by your standard plastic 3D printer. Other processes include uh, selective laser sintering or electron beam freeform fabrication. Another process is layered gas metal arc weld deposition, which is the process I implemented for my thesis. So this is where you use a standard arc welding system to put down layers of weld material until you have built up the part that you are creating. So why would you use additive manufacturing? There are a number of advantages to using this manufacturing approach. But the biggest one in, in the context of my thesis is that it allows for a significant, re significant reduction in the amount of material used uh, for, for most parts. Because you're building up a part rather than cutting away and discarding material, uh, you can drastically reduce the amount of material wastage. Other advantages include the fact that it uh, allows for a direct rapid prototyping approach. This means that you can go straight from a 3D CAD model of the part that you want to create, straight to a manufacturing process. Another advantage is that additive manufacturing allows for the creation of complex geometries, which would be difficult with subtractive techniques. However, there are a number of challenges. The biggest one is that additive manufacturing techniques often aren't as accurate as their subtractive counterparts. And another one is due to the nature of the process. Most additive techniques build a part up layer by layer, and the result of this is a quite a rough surface finish, which is also an issue. But these advantages and disadvantages make additive manufacturing and layered gas metal arc welding in particular very useful for an approach known as near net manufacturing. This is where the focus is on creating a part which is as close to the final shape as possible and then using a subtractive post processing uh, uh, after you've created the part to finalise the part. So you effectively get the best of both worlds. You additively build up the part as shown on the left. Uh, meaning you get material savings, and then you finish it using a subtractive machine, uh, as shown on the right, so you get a highly accurate part, which, uh, which also has a smooth surface finish. Uh, so what kind of thing is this uh, manufacturing approach useful for? So it's particularly useful when you're working with high value materials such as titanium, uh, since you can uh, achieve significant material savings. And uh, this kind of technology is being particularly developed for use in aircraft parts, such as the one shown below. Uh, if you can imagine, if you cut that part out of a solid block of titanium, you throw 90% of the material away. And actually, in, in aircraft parts, often that's the percentage of material that ends up on the workshop floor. So by using the manufacturing, you can significantly reduce your material usage and also drastically reduce the cost of manufacturing these kinds of parts. So for my thesis, I looked at a robotic near net manufacturing system as pictured below. Um, so I used a common industrial arc welding system, uh, which was on a uh, standard industrial uh, robotic arm. So the system I used was an AVB IRB4400 with the Fronius arc welder as pictured on the bottom left. And this has a number of advantages. It's relatively cheap and accurate, and it's also very flexible. You can use the same kind of system to both build up the part and then uh, use the same system to machine it away. 
as shown on the right here, this is another robotic arm with a machining attachment. Another, another advantage is that these kind of manipulators have a very large work envelope, so you can create uh, very large parts. Uh, for my specific thesis, though, I only looked at the additive manufacturing component of this process, so I didn't consider the subtractive post-processing part in any detail. So the primary aim of my thesis was to develop a system which would let a user go from a 3D model of a part and then directly additively manufacture it using layered as well deposition. So there are a number of parts of this. Uh, the main goal was to develop software which would make this possible to go from a, a 3D model to a robot program which when executed would build up that part. As part of this, I also needed to uh, characterise the world bead geometry and optimise it uh, to, make the process, uh, to make the process possible. So first, I'll show you the software I tried to build as part of my thesis. Uh, you can see a couple of screenshots on the bottom. Uh, the software I developed lets you choose a 3D model um, that you make in any kind of 3D modeling software, and it directly generates a robot program which you can then execute straight away. And all the algorithms used are designed to be parametric. Uh, rather than tying the software to one specific welding system or process or material or set of settings, uh, I ensure that all the algorithms are parametric, so you can adjust it depending on your exact system. I'll go through now exactly how the software works. So it starts off by loading a 3D model such as the one shown here. And the first step is to slice this into a number of discrete 2D layers, uh, which you can see here. And uh, these are uniformly spaced. And each layer is then considered in turn. And for each layer, a well position toolpath is generated, as represented by the lines here. So the arc welding torch will move along these lines, depositing weld material as it goes, in order to build up that layer. This is then done in turn for each layer until the part is being created. And these paths are then translated directly into rapid code, which is the programming language that the robotic system uses, and which can be directly executed. So that's the software, and I'll now uh, talk a bit about the actual welding process. So welding has a number of parameters, things like uh, travel speed, wire feed rates, transfer mode, and all of these will have a different effect on the weld bead geometry. The main parameters which are important for the software were the width, height, and consistency of the weld deposition bead. Uh, and all of these parameters are used to configure the software in order to generate appropriate tool paths. So the primary focus was on characterizing a weld bead geometry and then using this information to configure the software. So I used a 2D profile scanner and you can see some of the scans here and then I use this to measure the relevant parameters and then use this to configure my software. However, I needed to develop a set of weld settings to actually use uh, to make this possible. So I started initially with a an initial set of weld settings with a focus on making the bead as small as possible with the thought that I could try and create fine features. However, I encountered issues with arc, with arc stability and also some other problems. So I had to optimise well settings to account for this. Uh, one major problem that I encountered was that the height of the deposited bead was not consistent. So this blue line along here was the unoptimised deposition height. As you can see, there's a large bulge at the start and quite a slow drop off at the end. So I analysed this and modelled it and developed uh, a control strategy by, which adjusted the velocity of the well travel speed. And this ended up producing this quite smooth uh, result here. If you can imagine, if you put 10 of these blue deposition piles on top of each other, the cumulative error would be quite high. So as a result of this optimization, I had a set of well settings which, was, uh, which were consistent enough to use for an additive manufacturing process. So I'll show you some of the parts I managed to create. So one part I made was the UAW logo, as seen here, and I'm sure you've seen many times before. Here's a short video showing the actual process. As you can see, uh, this is the very first layer being deposited. And the process starts from the outside in. It also pauses after each deposition part to allow the piece to cool. Here's the same part after about four or five layers have been deposited. And again, after 15 layers have been deposited, the final part is about 25 millimeters high. One issue you might notice is there are a couple of holes here, 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 which actually weren't intentional. Uh, this is due to some uh, not optimal filtering that in the software, but that issue was easily addressed as you'll see in the next part that I created. So here's the final piece after it's been machined to illustrate the DNA manufacturing process. The part was built up and then machined to produce a smooth, a smooth finish. You could also go around the edges if you had access to a CNC machine and produce a very accurate result which was very close to the original model with a minimum of material waste.
single strike, which is shown here. So here are the toolpaths generated uh, by the software <coughs> for this part. Here's a part partway through the, the deposition of the first plate. Oops, excuse me for a second. And here you can see the same part after a few layers have been deposited. And here's the final part after it's been built up significantly. As you can see, there's a significant amount of weld spatter, but that can be addressed by tuning the weld settings and it's not a major problem. And here's the final part after it's been machined as well. So, in conclusion, um, I've successfully developed a piece of software which let, allows you to go straight from a CAD model to an additive layer weld manufacturing process. And that software was developed in such a way that it can be uh, configured for different materials, settings, and systems quite easily. Uh, as part of this, I also characterised and optimised the weld bead geometry and settings. Uh, and a number of test pieces were successfully created to demonstrate the system. Uh, in terms of future development on this kind of system, one major thing would be to move from steel to other materials such as titanium, which is one area that's going to be looked at in the future. Another would be to automate the subtractive post-processing. Uh, a third area would be improving the control of the welding process, which wasn't a major focus of my thesis. I was more focused on the software development. <coughs> and a final thing would be support for more advanced geometries, such as parts which have horizontal protrusions and other advanced features. So, thanks very much for listening. Are there any questions? <coughs>